Okay, so um, I don't trust people that don't cuss. <laughs> so y'all have to pick the cuss word that you're going to say. Now, which cuss word are we saying? Let's go big or go home. Go big. So F word yeah. on three. One, two, three. Oh. Right. Right, there you go. So the reason why I start with that is because we have a tendency to be very... Um, limited, conservative, and to a certain extent, you know, restricted, right? When you're having conversations about real things, you have to have genuine conversation. You cannot pretend like, I don't cuss, I didn't stub my toe, I didn't go, damn it, in that morning when you hit your, you know, your foot on the side of the bed. You have to be genuine. And that's going to be a theme throughout the entire conversation this morning. It's about being genuine and addressing real issues in urban communities, okay? So I'm going to go over some of these, these little slides right here. I don't know where the computer is. I'm going to just keep... Okay, cool. So my organization is called Black Guns Matter. We're a firearm safety and training organization, specifically geared towards urban America. Why urban America? Because gun control is not about guns. It's about people. It's about controlling large amounts of people, right? In a space where they do not have the means to defend the things that they believe in. We do not want you to have the ability to protect the value systems that you have, all right? And the origin of it is racist. Let's just be very clear about that. Gun control came about right after emancipation. Hey, we kind of been like beating these people of color up for however many hundred years. Now they have equal rights in that sense. You always had them, you know. But since they have that, we want to control the means of them defending themselves against our oppression and tyranny. All right? That's what happened. That is the origin of it. When you want to learn something, you got to go to the natural genesis of it first. Right? So with that being the case, that is the origin of all gun control, all of it. Everything else is a subsidiary, right? So with that being the case, in traveling around as a hip hop artist, I started to see so many of my friends from different urban areas were catching the same case. Possession charge, possession charge. Now he, he didn't shoot anybody, he didn't rob anybody, she didn't shoot anybody, she didn't rob anybody. I just have the actual tool on me. Felony, facing five years, right? You know how that go. Felony, now you tied into the 13th Amendment, you tied into all of these other different things, right? Not because of the, you know, the criminal intent or the malicious intent, but the lack of information. So when you go to Compton, Chicago, and it's the same charge everywhere, it's a highly organized phenomenon. It is not an accident. It is intentional, right? So we created this thing where, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter at the time was all over the news, but they kept doing this. <coughs> Hands up, don't shoot. That is a very non-patriotic, non, you know, it's a submissive position. I do not surrender for anything. You will have to off me first. That's what the founding fathers were about. You're gonna, I mean, it could have went either way. George Washington and those guys, you lose, you're the villain. You're the bad guy, you're hanging from somebody's tree. That's how that goes. So they technically were the criminals, right? So when you tie those things and you, you go into an urban environment where you sh share with people that, You've been separated from these constitutional principles or these bills, these human rights, this Bill of Rights, this Declaration of Independence. When you remove urban people of all races from that, they do not feel as if they're attached to it. If they're not attached to it, they don't, it doesn't matter what happens to it. You see where I'm going there? So if you have a city like New York, six, seven, eight million people that damn near can't get a firearm to defend their life from anything, enemies foreign or domestic, it's easy to control them. So seeing that, because you can't defend anything. If the zombie apocalypse happens, and me and my friends have guns, and you got all of the supplies, thank you. Me and my friends are coming to take your stuff. OK? But if you have firearms, you have a means to defend against that, even philosophically, spiritually, whatever, lean that you want to call. So we came up with this organization called Black Guns Matter because I don't I'm not at the point of trying to explain to somebody that my life matters. I don't care if you think if my life matters. I know my life matters, and I have the means to defend my life. And if you try to stop that life, liberty, or that pursuit of happiness, my black gun will show you very quickly how much my life matters. OK? So we started the organization, Black Guns Matter. We, we initially had a scenario where you know, we said, hey, Let's do a license to carry drive, because it was around going into the, you know, this, this most recent presidential election. Let's have a license to carry drive, because everybody said, oh, man, let's do voter registration drive, voter registration drive. A lot of my friends are felons. 
They couldn't do that. So we made a joke, oh man, we're gonna have a license to carry drive. Ha 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 ha, oh, this actually might make sense. Right? So not because my friends that were felons, they, their wives, their children, things of that nature, there were a bunch of people that had people around them that were not felons, right? That weren't out on the list of what you can't do, you can't protect your personal freedoms, right? They didn't know where to go to get information to inform people what to do and what not to do. So we had this voter reg registration drive. Um, it was way too many people, way too many people. And so many people said, uh, we would love to have something like this in our town, in Jersey, in New York. And so we joked again and we said, wouldn't it be funny if we went on a tour? Let's do like 13 cities, like the 13 original colonies. Ha, 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 ha. Actually, this makes sense. So we started a GoFundMe. Um, our original goal was $25,000 in 13 cities. We destroyed it. Every city that we went to, we were finding more and more people saying, I have this um, feeling that I'm separated from this thing. Because you, know, you hear the same you know, cliches. When they wrote that, that wasn't for you. They didn't mean it was for you. I don't give a shit what they meant. And we have to have that thought process. I do not care what you meant it for. Until someone shows up and says, this is not mine, verbally, you government official needs to show up and say, this is not for you. Because actually, if you study all of these other documents that founded this place, that is actually my human right, not given to you or me by this government. And I'm telling you all in this room, you guys get it, you women get it, right? But I'm telling you, there's 40 or 50 million Americans across the country that have been systematically put outside of this information. Like right now here, if I say rimfire cartridge, who knows what that means? Libertarians. <laughs> Guns. Give me liberty or give me death, like kind of that thing, right? If you go into an urban demographic, they'll know what type of gun may be, so forth and so on. But if I say rimfire cartridge, what's, cartridge, what's the four basic rules of firearm safety? I don't know what you're talking about. We have been told firearms are for law enforcement or the bad guys. You feel me? So let's move on a bit. In urban communities across the United States, thousands of people lose their lives each year due to a lack of fundamental Second Amendment education. Existing solutions are subpar because they do not take a culturally relevant approach. Culturally relevant. You guys, I was here last night. There are geniuses in this room. Where's the bow tie guy? <laughs> that guy right there is a genius. However, when you're talking to people that do not have the understanding that you have because of your studious background, you miss them. You miss them. There's cultural, uh, irrelevant conversation happening because we're starting from, you should know this. There has been a systematic approach to make sure urban America does not know this, right? So that's why the culturally irrelevant thing and the, the existing solutions is subpar. What are some of the existing solutions? Oh, gun locks. Okay, so if the gun lock, but you're an anti-gun group. So you don't want guns, but you want to give out gun locks. And you don't want me to show up there to show you how to properly secure this firearm because I said firearm. It's a catch-22. It's a contradiction. In order for us to win, you have to expose the contradiction to the maximum degree. Say that with me. Expose the contradiction to the maximum degree. Respectfully. That's a contradiction. Look, A, B, C, D. Not yelling, not arguing, not trying to convince you. The way to the truth is going to be the way to the truth regardless. Facts. The other side uses feelings. We are not applying feelings enough because of the cultural irrelevance. We say, oh, me and Mark had a conversation last night. Oh, they should just get it. We don't. It's the onus falls on the people in this room to move forward and make sure that we get that. If you want liberty for everybody. If not, then you, we kind of like, just like at church. All right? This right here, this is Chris and his mom. This is actually a, a I know Chris. Chris's brother was murdered. That's his mom. There's absolutely no way you're telling, they went super anti-gun after that. There is no way that you're telling a mom a mom that lost her child to ignorance with someone using a firearm, is, you, you run up against a brick wall. To tell Chris, who's been immediately and for, almost forever like traumatized, to convince that person with a culturally irrelevant approach that firearms are safe and responsible and that's your right, that was, we were up against that brick wall. Chris came to our class in Philadelphia 
with the BBC for um, a documentary they, they were putting together. It's out now. Um, Chris clearly had a trauma, right? As someone from an urban environment that understands trauma in relation to firearms, we are walking around with PTSD. We are walking around with PTSD. You see somebody's head get opened up up the street from you, it changes you. There's plenty of well-decorated uh, military guys that have wrote books on it, on killing. Y'all should, ch should definitely write some of these books down. It deals with the psychological ramifications of when you have to take a life at war. All right? With that being the case, if this young man and his mom are affected or traumatized, I cannot lead with a firearm. It has to be culturally relevant. It has to be respectful to their trauma. That's why we deal with conflict resolution. And it has to de-escalate the misinformation that they have been presented after all of everyone else in America told you guns are bad, guns are bad, guns are bad. Their lived experience because of that trauma, you cannot lead with the firearm. So Chris came to our class. I said, hey, man, it was at a gun range. It was at a gun range. It was our family class. We had children and face painting and all these other different things. And we were there to show Chris and his mother. His mother had still had a, a will, you know, rightfully so, a slight aversion. But we were like, hey, if you want to, this is a proper way of dealing with firearms. The trauma that you had was horrible because that person was misinformed and had no respect for the tool. Upon ignorance, upon ignorance, upon years and years and years, or almost decades of people saying, this information is for bad people. If people have an understanding, we're talking about cultural paradigm shifts. The funny thing is you got to go backwards in history because that's what these founding documents were about. The founding fathers to this nation did not just say nice things to the British. They shot them. That happened. You have to understand what your personal, as a libertarian, your personal level of commitment may not be, I'm willing to shoot and die for what I believe in, me personally. You don't have to have that level of commitment. You might just be excellent at paperwork. But there's a position for everybody in the army. Okay? Chris came to our class. Chris's understanding of firearm safety, de escalation, and tactics, I think he, sh he wound up shooting. Did he wind up shooting? He didn't shoot, but he, he had pictures of him with the, you know, replica firearms and things of that nature. That is a step in the proper direction based on information because it was culturally relevant to that scenario. To get a mom and her son, who's their, his brother, was murdered to get a step, an inch, a foot, a yard, based on culturally relevant information is a huge thing. That's in there forever. Okay? Let's move on to the next one. Key word. You're gonna have to say it after me. Cultural relevance. On three. One, two, three. I don't think there's a black gun culture or a white gun culture. I think there's an informed gun culture and an ignorant gun culture. Now, me and Mark had this conversation about race. Mass media will have you believe that every black dude turns his gun this way and shoots that way and so forth and so on. Some people in the room might think that that's how guns are shot, right? That is mass media conditioning and separating races of people to keep them separated from joining together in liberty. If it's one of me and if it's all of y'all, I have to have y'all not communicating fully and hating each other in order to contain the lion's share of the resources in this room. That is textbook, top tier, hall of fame, checklist, divide and conquer, 101. The problem for you guys is, and women, you know this, but you can't come into an urban community and, and say that. that yeah, I, yeah, sure, you know about my life. Because the conditioning works on both sides. The conditioning works on both sides. They, they tell, oh, you, okay, Becky, right. You, you went to college, great. I'm a high school dropout. Sure, you know about my life and liberty, sure. The condition has been told on both sides. Sure, sure thing, black dude, you're gonna come into Arizona State, you're gonna talk to these people about urban, yeah, sure, 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 we should listen to you. You have been thoroughly conditioned. Well, maybe y'all are, y'all are kinda like libertarians, so you like broke free some of that matrix, right? The ignorant, the informed gun culture is proper handling, safety, responsibility, securing and handling of that firearm. That's the informed gun culture. That does not mean you have to be a marksman, a technically sound, you know, barrel twist ratios, what melanite coating, silencer co barrels. That does not mean that. If you go down that rabbit hole, then so be it. Right? 
cartridges and, and calibers alone is 10 years of study. That does not mean you're informed. That just means you're a specialist, right? All of us can be, you may, you may not be um, a marksman or a markswoman, but you can be an expert in safety, especially in relation to being culturally relevant to strengthen our numbers, to strengthen our numbers. We need more hands on deck on this side of the tug of war rope. So we good there? Ignorant gun culture, um, dumb shit. Pretty much. I'm, I'm, throwing, I'm, I'm sleeping with my firearm under my pillow. They say that all of the time in mass media. You, start, you watch certain movies. Every time you watch the movie, gun people go, oh my god, that's not true. Every time you walk up to somebody in the movie and they, like, first, how somebody responds to a firearm being pulled on them is nothing like what happens in every movie you've seen. The person walks up behind them and they're, like, cocking the gun. First of all, that sound isn't even really true. Like, that click, click that they make, if you're already loaded and you're pointing the gun at somebody, it's already loaded. Little, little, little things that add to the little, little bit of ignorance and conditioning by attrition. So you accept these things as true, but they're far from not. But because you've also been scared to not go in the gun room, you miss that. And then definitely you don't tie it back into liberty because civics have been taken out of your public schools. Feel me? It's a holistic approach to keeping you ignorant. All right, let's move on. This guy's like really handsome. <laughs> Jesus. Black guns matter. A hip and refreshing brand working to expose urban communities to a culturally relevant understanding of our Second Amendment rights and responsibilities. Y'all pretty much get that. I have to go into places where the conditioning is so thick that if, even if most of the people in this room were saying the same exact thing, it's met with a conditioning. And I want you all to understand it. It's just like you're trying to explain libertarian principles to somebody who says, well, you sound like a Republican. Well, do you know that this is the republic for which it stands? Right? And they go, well, no, I'm, 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 it's a democracy. I'm a Democrat. Well, why? Well, because my dad was a Democrat, and we wrote out of fear and tradition. You feel me? So now when you're trying to explain that to somebody that's, that's that brick wall, it would be the same thing as you trying to go into urban America and trying to do You have to have liaisons. You have to have liaisons, because you can't know what you don't know. Somebody right now, tell me the name of a color. Say it out loud. You can't use the name of any other colors. No, you can't use the name of a color. Say the name of a color that you've never seen before. And you can't use the name of any other colors. You can't go purple, brown and purple. You can't say preen, pink and green. You can't use any of those words. Now make up a new name for a new color right now. You can't because you don't know what you don't know. So you walk into rooms and you say these things. I understand your intent because I might be a little bit more evolved than study, just a tad bit. I'm a high school dropout, right? But self-study is key. So with that being the case, I may understand your perspective, but to somebody that's still in that matrix, you need a liaison to get them to that point because you have information, but the other side has feelings they have feelings, and they're very good at manipulating feelings. They manipulated Chris and his mother's feelings to keep them on the anti-gun, anti-freedom side. It gets deep. That's what she said. <laughs> I think that we're living in communities where there's a lot of gun access without a lot of information. A lot of students need to learn safety through Black Guns Matter, and there will be less gun-related accidents. This is Taylor Fromm. She's a Philadelphia high school principal. Back in the day, firearm safety used to be taught in schools in America, like homeschool and home economics and like wood shop, like trades and stuff, like stuff that they're saying, we need to bring this stuff back. That stuff used to be taught in schools. It hasn't been for like four or five decades. We, this year, taught in a Philadelphia public school firearm safety for a week with all of the students that they said, oh, these are the bad students, right? That's the principle of that school. Self-proclaimed hippie. She was honest enough to say, what we're doing is not working. Some of my students are still getting shot, shooting other students, so forth and so on. So we came into the school. Everybody was like, how did you get firearm safety in a public school? Well, we didn't lead with a firearm because we presented culturally relevant, relevant information. If someone is a, plugged into a matrix, 
They will def kill you to defend their illusions. Use the illusion to get them back to truth. We're going straight with facts against people that are very well financed and control mass forms of media. Use the illusion by any means necessary. If you got to use the illusion, cool, because if the truth will get them back. Okay, you like diamonds. I'll show you the shiny diamond. Cool. I'm going to get you back to coal because you can't get the coal without the diamond without the coal. Telling you how important coal is in the beginning when I know you're conditioned to like shiny stuff is a waste of your time. It's a waste of your time. Show them the diamond. Hey, look at these diamonds. Okay, come on back now. Right? So in doing that, Taylor was brave enough to, you know, make her school open to us. Um, so two things happened there. One, Wednesday, when we were doing our conflict resolution, I used two students to create conflict. I literally told them, hey guys, you have no control over your emotions. I'm telling you that I'm going to trigger your emotions and you're still going to respond to it. Told them, up front, I'm going to trick you guys into fighting each other. No, you're not. Nah, nah, nah. And it actually worked. The problem was, I didn't know that these two students already had pre-existing beef. <laughs> the problem, it was funny, until after school where one of the students had his gun on him and was going to shoot the other student. His gun, not the, not the you know, replica firearm. So we went through the whole conflict resolution. I'm getting wind of this vibe. It's not cool. They got words after class. We wind up going outside. One of my students is ready to shoot the other one. Two lives are going to end that day. Somebody's getting shot, somebody's going to jail. That's what's happening. They're not even paying attention to how every four minutes the police officers are going around the school, as customarily they do after schools in Philadelphia schools, right? Not even paying attention. For about 45 minutes, we walked through every single thing that we dealt with in the conflict resolution portion of the class outside of the class. They shook hands, they moved on, they still communicate. One of them graduated, the other one was graduating sooner. Culturally relevant. All of them students, two out of every five of them had a gun on them in the class. I'm not tripping. Have your gun. Have your gun. We got to make, it has to be normalized. It has to, because it was at a certain point. It's like your phone. Oh, I got to go back. I left my gun. <laughs> we laugh, but it has to become that normal. Let me be very clear. You are in a psychological, spiritual, financial, political, and social war. It's just what it is. And I'm not saying you got to get your gun and start shooting people. I'm saying there's a holistic approach to keep you a battery for the state. It's just what it is. Uh, so Taylor let us in. Taylor's the hippie. She's this end of the, the, the spectrum. S lived in a commune, hippie, blah, blah, blah. Right? Her own words. I'm a hippie. I lived in a commune for however many years. Oh, this is our class in, um, what is this, Boston. So, so those pictures, those are the uh, replica firearms that we give. And while, when someone comes to the class, that's their firearm for the time that they're there. So when somebody messes up and has their finger on the trigger or their muzzle discipline is, how many people in here know what muzzle discipline is? Who does not know what muzzle discipline is? Somebody tell her what muzzle discipline is. So lightsaber, Zzz, Star Wars, imagine the barrel of the firearm is a lightsaber. Anything that you sweep, what happens when you cut it off? So imagine the front of your barrel, is a, that's the muzzle. Imagine if that is a lightsaber, so you want to always point it in a direction where it's not sweeping past anybody. Right? So we give our students the firearms. They come into the class with the replica firearms. This is your firearm for the time that you're here. You have to practice all of the four rules of you know, firearm safety. You got to put it in a hand. Then they all, even with a replica one, you see how nervous people are around firearms. You see how they don't want to, I'm showing how much I don't know. But once you give them basic information, it's in there. You cannot unplug from that, right? Black Guns Matter is one of the most important gun rights movements of the 21st century. Through it, Maj Touré is, Maj Touré is highlighting the urban community's need to embrace the Second Amendment. That is an amazing quote by A.W.R. Hawkins. He's a doctor of firearms, literally. He's a PhD in firearms. He's like a gun guy, like seriously, right? He, he, he writes for this little known magazine called Breitbart. You might have heard of it, right? Can't get more opposite on the end of the spectrum than Taylor. 
cannot get more opposite. Both of these different thought processes of people are going, this is this important. Because they're able to go, okay, what we're doing on this extreme right isn't working. What we're doing on this extreme left isn't working. We need more balance. It's where you guys and women come in at. <laughs> but if you don't have the right culturally relevant information, right over people's head. Uh, AWR actually has um, Black Guns Matter merch too. So our goals. Inform urban Americans about the Second Amendment. Inform urban Americans on firearm safety. Correct misinformation regarding race relations in the gun community. Generate commerce and partnerships for firearm-related businesses. I am a capitalist. I make no qualms about that, period, okay? Is there a way that we can serve the public and get rich? Yes, Whole Foods does it every day. That's the balance. So all of these things are interrelated. The reason why I'm saying this and it's very key is because a lot of times what happens is we have these grand causes. We have these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ideologies, these philosophies, and we can show historically where they've made sense. Now in present time, you have to figure out how that makes sense. And we sometimes drop the ball there, especially when you're talking to somebody from an urban or poor demographic. I don't care what your race is. If you're white and urban and poor, why are you showing someone how this is not financially beneficial for them as well? Even something as simple as if you do this this way, you spend the $20, you don't have any charges yet, you've never caught a case, spend the $20 in Philly, get the license to carry, leave them there. I know some of y'all will go, a license for an inalienable right? We're in this box now, though. We're in this box. Our fault of our predecessors was they didn't defend these things vigorously enough and the other side has been winning by attrition, period. So while you're telling somebody, this is actually bullshit, I'm also gonna give you the information so you don't go to prison while we overturn the bullshit. That's the balance. I am a Jedi, I am not a Sith. I do not do extremes. The middle path, that Gandhi shit, okay? Uh, correct misinformation regarding race relations in the gun community. Most people have heard, is, okay, is there a lot of white dudes in the gun community? Yes. Okay, cool, we get it, right? We said in the beginning gun control was started, it's racist. It's designed from the select group of people that wanted to continue abusing people and not get their ass whipped. They created something. It's racist. Does that mean that every single person that's a white male in the gun community is racist? Absolutely not. I, I, my, my lived experience dictates the opposite of that, right? The problem is, even in being self-taught, I don't look to mainstream media all of the time for my answers. The general public that we're trying to reach has been told and conditioned something other. Don't go in the NRA, don't go in the Second Amendment organization, blah, blah, blah. And some of that stuff is, you run into those things and you run into those guys in there. You run into that jerk and you go, oh, I knew everybody. And then we make this blanket statement. Now, how could you as the white male fighting against that conditioning go into the community without the liaison to translate that with also culturally irrelevant information. You lose every time. And the other side says, see, those people over there don't care about you. Come over here, anti-gun. Let the government take care of you. We'll protect you. It's okay. Feelings. Feelings. People forget what you do for them. People forget what you say to them. But they remember how you made them feel. Feel me? Ha, <laughs> feel me. So we already did the inform urban Americans on firearm safety, uh, inform urban Americans about the Second Amendment. I, I, I want to touch on that just a little bit more. For, for, you may not know what it feels like to feel like you've been separated from something. Your lived experience, that white privilege shit, to a certain extent, is kind of real. To a certain extent. At a certain point, it becomes individual accountability. You can't not acknowledge one without the other. You can't say slavery didn't happen. You can't say institutions weren't set up. But you also can't say, oh, well, it's insurmountable. It's nothing you can do. There has to be that balance. Acknowledge what was wrong as a man in America that happens to be a certain melanated content. I'm fully aware of Jim Crow, the prison, the, uh, prison industrial complex. I'm fully aware of that. You can beat that with a little bit of knowledge yourself and some, some study. But if the traps are being set, you have to acknowledge, look, they're setting the trap right there. They're saying, hey, 
Most states want marijuana legalization, but on the federal form, when you purchase a firearm, you're 4473. If you deal with, you deal with marijuana in any way, which is scheduled next to heroin, you're now a felon if you lie on that form and we come take your right to defend your life. You cannot pretend like that's not a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. You just don't fall in the trap. But don't say, don't fall in the trap and then say, man, they set a trap for me. You just knew it was a trap. <laughs> and you also can't say, there's no traps. Because what happens is because you guys have more of an uh, independent thought process, and that's true. You say that should translate to everybody, but your lived experience, you have not been at the center of scope of that conditioning. You have not been. Respect the difference and change it. All right? Um, what else is here? Okay, this is very, very good. So what we do, this is our model for change. We are solutionaries. We are not revolutionaries. Revolve is going around the same thing. The earth revolves around the sun. Unless you're a flat earther, and that's, I don't really know. I thought we handled this whole round sphere thing. Um, when you revolve around something, you don't really present a solution. You just keep going around it. I am not a revolutionary. I am a solutionary. This is the problem. Here's the solution. You apply it. We never have to deal with this again. The problem is we've been talking revolution. It sounds so, it sounds so, you know, like romantic. We romanticize these things. I don't ever want to have this conversation again. There were documents that were written that actually kind of dealt with this from the gate. Right? So we have to apply those solutions that's around. So, as in being solutionaries, this is one of our solutions. We come into the environment. It is a toxic, manipulated, controlled, trap environment. When you're hustling, you ever hear some, how many people in here heard the phrase, oh, I'm trapping? None of y'all. He has. He listens to hip hop. He listens to hip hop. Guaranteed they're both under 25. And the black dude. <laughs> what is trapping? Trapping is literally when you are selling drugs. It's called the trap. I am in the trap. I'm trapping to get out of the trap. The environment is a trap psychologically, right? So we go into that environment. We use the media and or social media. You all should follow it. My Instagram is hilarious. It's, it's amazing. We use media and social media, this is media, to influence the attitude. Because the media and social media presentations are culturally relevant, they feel good, as well as the information is sound. It's factual. You have to have both. We have been leaning on facts for too long. Facts are boring. Facts are boring. Facts are boring. You have to do both. Facts are boring. <laughs> then. That information through the media and social media changes the attitude. When that person's attitude changes, then we change their behavior. Even if they don't admit it to you in that moment, they won't. You'll say some libertarian principles to somebody, they'll argue you down for two hours until you run out of oxygen or whatever. Two weeks later, they're the other person in the conversation talking to somebody else. They're going to repeat exactly what you said to that new person like they came up with it. I don't care if we get the credit for it. The it's paid forward. It's a virus. You understand? Attitude changes the behavior. Then I want that attitude and the behavior change to go back into the environment. This is a virus. This is a freedom virus. You are all bugged. You got it. <laughs> you have to spread that. And this is a one effective way that we have utilized in the worst places in America to see those changes, okay? Well, before we get to that, though, we're going to ask questions. I cannot help you if I can't serve you. So I don't want to wait to the end. So let's take some questions now, and I'm going to answer them real quick, then we'll move forward. Now, they can be race-based. They can be ratchet-based. They can be political. Don't get too wordy. I'm not that smart, okay? I disagree that you're not that smart, but <laughs> um, what, what are libertarians doing wrong? Oh, off top, y'all are too smart. Y'all are too smart. You, you, don't, you don't apple, you're right, that's the problem. You're right. The problem with being right is you're talking to people that you know are wrong, and you do not meet them where they are. You can't 
Thomas Aquinas, what? <laughs> Conditioning. And you don't have liaisons. You have facts. You're right. I'm openly saying you're right. I have to hide more of my libertarian thought process a lot of times. I don't care about a moral victory. I'm trying to win. There are 40 or 50 million Americans that do not have the information. And when you lead with only the facts, with only the boring stuff, and the other side is making welfare, don't worry about it. You don't have to do anything. We got you. Just come on in. Your rent is $71 a month. I got you. It's subsidized. Just chill. Matter of fact, give up your firearms. We got that. If you want these things, just give us your firearms. Let us take, it's OK. Let us be big daddy for you. That feels great. Until there's a concentration of firearms and now like you in like gas chambers and shit. Right? You're leading with facts too much. Applesauce. You guys know how to chomp an apple in seven ways from Sunday. You're dealing with people of all racial backgrounds. There's a concentrated effort in urban America to make large amounts of people, it's people control, to make them dumb. You have done self-study. We have not. Get a liaison, dumb it down a bit. Sorry if that sounds harsh. Dumb it down a bit. Have a question? Oh, y'all always do this. Nobody wants to answer. Ask the question. Wait, let her go first. She's a, she's a, is that sexist if I say let her go first because she's a woman? OK, OK. <laughs> OK, dumbing it down. Mark did this to me at our, class, at, at our event in, um, in Avondale. Bail. I was under the concept or construct that bail was like, yeah, you just pay the bail. And like you like get outside until, well, if I'm presumed innocent, why are you making, why are you give, making me give you a ransom? When you, that's a ransom. I'm presumed innocent. I didn't, no one's dead. There's no, there's, even if someone's dead, you have to prove that I did it. So why am I giving you a ransom to get out if I'm presumed innocent? Dumb down. That's the whole bail concept. Then when you tell that to somebody, they go, we literally did it in the class. I was like, ah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Simple. Simple. Don't lead with books. Lead with um, quotes. We in a microwave age. We in a microwave age. Instagram is one minute videos. You, the onus falls on you to make it simple. Do not lead with books. Lead with quotes from those authors. They'll find the book. You have to trust the process. I'm an Eagles fan. You got to, and Philly fan. You got to trust the process. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You gotta, oh. <laughs> I check his social media on Monday. Yeah, when, when I win. <laughs> The thing there is, you have to dumb it down in a space where you, one key component, use the quote, don't use the book. Use the quote, don't use the book, I promise you. And if you, now have the whole gambit from point one to point two, if your book is point five, have one through five already ready, they will show up. Yo, remember you, we was talking, you said that quote, who was that guy? Oh, it was this guy, and he bop, 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 conversation. You have to open the dialogue. Nothing has been more dialogue open in the name of our organization. Black Guns Matter. White guys usually say, man, I can't wear that shirt. They're going to think I'm making fun of Black Lives Matter. You know how many people, white dudes, are wearing a shirt, and it creates so many conversations? Hey, man, what's that mean? What do you mean by that? Oh, it's the Second Amendment organization. Well, the Second Amendment, that's not for me. I'm from the hood. Well, actually, it is. Bop, 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 applesauce. Applesauce. I'm getting you to the coal from the diamond. One more question, then we're going to move on. You. Actually ended up answering my question. Ha ha. Yeah, I was um, going to ask, um, how would uh, you inspire them to, or for the thirst of knowledge, you know, how would you get them to want to educate themselves? And you show them where they've been tricked. My really, really, really rich Hollywood friends, right, they think they know a lot. When you expose them, hey, you've been tricked here, here, and here. I didn't do it. I'm just telling you that's where you was tricked. Nobody wants to feel played. Nobody. 
When you give, there's a fire that lights in people when you show them how the American government, that's just true. The American government has convinced people to operate in their own disinterest for some time now. Individuals through using the government, using the private sector, whatever. When you show people, yo, something as simple as, hey man, gun control is racist. Hey man, the slave codes. Hey, and take them back to that natural origin. So wait, it's not really about safety? Absolutely not, because with the NFA, National Firearms Act of the 30s, Crime and violence has steadily risen with more gun control. That's not me make, that's when we get to the facts. Hey man, I feel like they tricked, use that word. Hey man, I feel like they tricked you there. What you mean? Tricked me? Yeah man, look, here's the stats to support that. Do it on your own. Now you feel, you have to do the same thing that the other side is doing. And it sounds so, it, 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 it sucks. We're in this box now though. Tell people where they have been tricked. It's just what it is. There's a reason why Mr. Trump is the president. He knows how to manipulate feelings. He manipulated the entire Electoral College's feelings. What? I'm not debating the fact that, you know, cutting red tape doesn't help speed along, you know, industry. So if, I'm not debating that. I got it. I'm objective. Yeah, I can see why that could be beneficial. We'll see. Give me two more years, though, and see if this trend holds. Right? Because I can't also can't go, well, there's a gang of stuff with Obama that I didn't like. But you can't already, and within this one year or some change, attribute everything to this presidency. That's the balance. But here's the thing. If I say, this guy is like Ringling Brothers. He's, he knows how to like, and there's a, there's a power in that, right? So when you show that and you go, okay, this person's done this, this, and this, but they've made you feel like this, this, and this. They go, oh, okay. You have to show feelings and you have to show them where they have been tricked. And let, you know, let the chips fall where they may. And then make yourself consistently available to those people. You, you chose this life. You chose a libertarian life. There's responsibility that comes along. Spider-Man. It's the same thing. You chose this. So now it's your responsibility after you get this person this information, they're going to come to you. Feelings, facts, more information. Be ready and be prepared for that. Because sometimes it snowballs real fast. And in the beginning, they're really upset. What do you mean? I was lied to. I was told that this was. They're really upset. So in essence, you become like they, um, you become like their life coach. Don't do it if you're not willing to go all the way with it. Don't start a fight if you ain't willing to end it. And this is a fight. All right. Uh. Boom. Goal one: Inform urban Americans about the Second Amendment. This is our branding and marketing. Now let's see. White guy. Uh, well, damn, this picture isn't very much representative of all the white guys that we have. <laughs> oh, up on the right? Okay, white guy. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is key because on both sides, one, you have to show urban America. If you, see, if you notice, there's very few guns in these pictures. These are pictures that people that, that purchased the merchandise took pictures of themselves and sent it to us. This changes the optics. Oh, the gun community is just a bunch of racist white dudes. Not when you look at this. This is mostly people of color. Look at this smiling girl. Look at this girl with this gun that's bigger than her. Right? This changes the optics. The other side uses optics very well. But again, because you have facts, you're ignoring that part. Because you're fighting the good fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. And we all got the facts and the plan, like Mike Tyson said. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. We got all of these facts and plans, but we're, not, we're losing on the optics. So the branding is very key. So then you have people of color and white dudes and everybody walking around with these shirts or whatever saying black guns matter. Now, is it ambiguous? Are you talking about black people? Are you talking about black firearms? What do you think? If you're a gun guy or gun woman, you're going to say, you're going to say oh, he's talking about AR-15s. They do matter. If you're a dude in an urban environment that feels oppressed, you're going to go, yeah, I have a right to, and that's beautiful. That's balance. And you change the narrative, right? Speed through a little bit more of this. Boom, touring and outreach. Y'all already talked about that. We're on a 50-city tour. So you great people that want to donate, we are completely, no, we're in nobody's pocket, nobody's in our pocket, right? This tour, we have a goal of $150,000. We've already been to 30-some-odd cities. 
right? This was completely funded by people in their donations. Completely. Completely. So if the NRA goes, Maj, we, we kind of want you to say this. Nah, I don't, I don't think, no, I don't, I'm not saying that. Because I have no masters. I serve the people. It's the beautiful balance of the whole thing. So that's how we're on the tour. Um, these are some of the shows that we've done, correct the misinformation on race relations. So everybody told me, don't do Tommy Lauren's show. I hate her, she's racist, blah, 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 blah. Did you meet her? Do you know her? What have you said? She, have you heard her say, I hate Mexicans, I hate black people. Where is that at? Same thing with Trump. It's just bad business to be racist. Is he a dick? Probably. But ironically, nobody was saying this when he was on The Apprentice. Objectivity. So everybody told me, oh, don't do Tommy's show, she's racist. That video had over one million views in less than 24 hours. And me talking the same talk that I'm talking right here. We saw a lot of red hoodies after that too. Because I wore a red hoodie. Boom. The New York Post. Everybody, don't do the New York Times, don't do the New York Post, they're anti-gun. I'm not anti-gun. And I'm going to speak in a manner where you, you're going to be really, really hard pressed to edit me a certain way. The fear factor. Don't go over there. Don't talk to this person. That's how you change that. Just being brave and doing it. Joseph said, I think what you're doing is terrific. I hope your organization gets big enough to visit big city schools. We did that. And teach minority youth gun safety respect and respect for others. Thousands of young lives could be saved every year. I'll even donate. So this is the part where I'm going to ask you all for money. If you choose to donate, donate. If you don't, we're still going to get it done, and I'm going to laugh at you when we get the W. Okay? This is completely supported by the people. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Right? A couple more slides and a couple of questions, and I'm out your way. Generate commerce and partnerships and firearm-related business. Everybody that's on this uh, slide right here, we've done business with. Stoddard's Range and Guns, that's in Atlanta. Daniel Defense, which is a, a rifle-making company. Um, Last Stand Tactical is in Sacramento. Maryland Shall Issue, um, U.S. Law Shield, we have a partnership with them. We work with National Shooting Sports Foundation. That's who owns SHOT Show. SHOT Show is a um, trade show for firearms. That was last week in Vegas. azfirearms.com, y'all should go there. That's here. That's in Avondale, right? Couple, married couple, been married for however many years. Great, that's where we had that event. They have an auction house, pot of gold auctions. Amazing people. You know how you meet people and you're like, oh, these are like really like nice people? Like, those are like nice people. Um, they have the Gun Freedom Radio Show, Philly Firearms Academy. That's where we did our very first Black Guns Matter class, the, li the License to Carry Drive. Guns for Everyone, that's out in Colorado, Legally Armed in Detroit, and the Urban Arms Project. These are all companies, organizations, whatever, that we have worked with to lend energy from the urban demographic in their community, right? If we do a class in Atlanta that has 500 people there, those 500 people go to that range, I can't help you if I'm in Chicago next week if you live in Atlanta. But the people that you're interacting with at this class, now you go. In essence, this is Fight Club. If you didn't see Fight Club, you should watch Fight Club. Next step, continue to harness the power of individuals. I live in California, Hispanic barrios are now a predominantly black neighborhood in the Washington, D.C. area. And within these communities, I find a high level of ignorance astonishing in the knowledge of ownership, basic firearm safety, and self-defense with a firearm. You are changing this admirably. Let me know how I can help. And at the bottom of there, when this happened, we had already fundraised $74,000 by 1,040 individuals in 18 months. And this had 8.5 thousand GoFundMe shares. People do not spend money for things they do not want, generally. They might think they want it and then get buyer's remorse, but it's not a product. It's a service that people are donating to that we haven't even gone to their town yet. People vote with their dollars. Ignorantly or informed. What's happening is people in these, uh, these areas are going, we need this information, how can we keep this going? Okay? Boom. This is my next step. Complete the Black Guns Matter 50 State Tour. Somebody said, I attended both the Oakland and Sacramento class in California and was thoroughly impressed and educated. Please come to Cleveland. Please and thank you. We need the information here. Our emails are inundated with these type of messages. That's why when we started the 13 cities and got through the 13 cities, people got mad and were like, yo, you're such, a, you're such a horrible person. You didn't come to my town. You horrible person. We need this information because it's culturally relevant, it's factual, and you feel good. It's the trifecta. 
blah, 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 blah. I'll tell y'all about that. So we're going to make the first day that we did our first class National License to Carry Day. The other side uses feelings, holidays. Our holiday for gun people will be National License to Carry Day. We'll be May the 21st, right? It's a festivist for the rest of us. Okay? Boom, boom, and now Q&A. A couple of questions, because I'm going to get out of your way, and I'm going to get something to eat, and I'm going to drink. Go. Uh, your website? Um, yeah. We can go on there and buy the beer and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. along with uh, donating? Yeah, you can donate on the website. Um, all of that stuff's there. Officialblackgunsmatter.com. Nobody's going to write this down. Nobody's going to write it down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then you have to. you go to these different functions, is, are there organizations like, uh, you know, the state NRA equivalent or some of these organizations that they come in, they offer you money, they want to sponsor, they want to get in with it, and then what are you, what's your standard by working with them, or do you even want to work with them? I work with organizations, we work with organizations that want to do the work. So some of the organizations on the state level may not have, um, so the NRA, for example, they're huge. I would love for the NRA to go, hey, we want to give you a half a million dollars to continue doing this. We'd have to have that conversation about what the parameters, restrictions, and requirements would be. If it fits a lot of those things, yes, we would love to, because the NRA is the largest Second Amendment organization in the world. But at the same time, we also work with organizations like Com2A in Massachusetts that is a Second Amendment organization that actually sues the government for restricting people's rights, right? And so they may, may be, be able to make some money. What we did with those guys there was, um, in Massachusetts, you have to spend like $100 to take the test to start getting a license to carry. That's a barrier to entry. So because we work with Com2A and they were um, okayed by the state to give that test, we said, hey guys, for you guys exchange for us giving you all these emails for everybody that comes and you can create community around that, can you remove that $100 for that picture with all those people holding the firearms? Can you remove the $100? If they stay here, they get all of the information, they take the test right after the class, can you remove that $100 fee? They said yes. So thousands of dollars were saved and we put people on that path. So yes, um, I'm willing to work with anybody that's willing to do the work. And if they happen to have a trillion dollars and want to support what we're doing, as long as it's culturally relevant and it's not watering it down to the point where it's no longer effective, I am a capitalist. I am a capitalist. And in order, my money, individual money, gonna come on the end. But to get all of this work done first, it's just a matter of time. So, yes, we will be willing to work with any organization that's trying to do the work. And if you got like a billion dollars, like, holler at me. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good talk. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of tension inside the NRA. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a life member myself. Between. Um, the individual gun rights side of it, yeah. and the law enforcement support side of it. Yeah. And I would imagine that going into urban communities, there's a similar amount of tension between the individual gun rights side of it and the law enforcement side of it and, and the relationships between law enforcement and those communities. What's been your experience with that, and how do you bridge that or kind of de-escalate that yeah. conflict? So we de-escalate that conflict by dealing with the focus of the matter at hand. Righteousness. You have to be honest. It's, 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 it's so funny how so I have friends and family that are law enforcement. So we are not an anti-law enforcement organization. When we did our, our four cities in Cali, the uh, <laughs> Blue Lives Matter put something on their website that said, I had threatened all of California's law enforcement. And I got emails and, and I'm like, that's not true. And I called them and was like, yo, we're not anti-law enforcement. We are anti-oppression. If your officer is doing something that is not in alignment with serving the people, you don't have to protect them. That's a federal judge decision. You don't, you're not obligated to protect us. That's fine, right? But if you're doing something that's oppressing, I don't care what your uniform is. That does not give you a license to kill American citizens. That's balance, right? Because they would like to spin it as, oh, you're like, go shoot the police. No, why would I want you to shoot my cousin? My cousin's a cop. If he's a corrupt cop, well, you got what you, it's just like the street. You a good guy, you a bad guy, you a bad guy, well, you get what comes with that. 
You know what I mean? So in explaining it in that way, in a balanced way, is how we're able to approach that. So when people come to our classes, like in Compton, I thought you was in here going to say, F white people. Well, I'm sorry. You came to the wrong place. If you thought I was going to come in here and say, F all police officers, I'm sorry. You're in the wrong place. We are going to call out and be made, held accountable officers and citizens that are doing the wrong thing with whatever tools at hand. That's an easy fix. The people that disagree, like in the class in Avondale, when I said that about officers and felons and so forth and so on, he got up and he left. He didn't like the fact that, see, police officers don't understand how much of a gang they are. So when you expose that contradiction to the maximum degree by just telling the truth, you wear a color, you all are in the same uniform, you don't snitch. <laughs> it's the same thing. So by exposing that contradiction and saying, because of this, we want the most righteous of us in all of those different positions. That's an easy fix. And if a person's trying to strive for balance, they side to it. If you straight a criminal, anti-police, da, da 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 bad guy, you'll leave, just like that officer left. And that's fine. I can't, I, you're not in the space, your spiritual evolution isn't in the space where I can really reach you with this information. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on over time. Okay, so, go ahead. Y'all, so I'm available. Y'all can ask me this stuff afterwards, after all of that. My bad, y'all. Thank y'all for having me, though.